Fraser Fife, Matthew Diglio, Matthew Sampson on debut, and Joe Schwab. Welcome, gentlemen. Kick your feet up. On today's show, we're talking crystal balls. We are talking about basketballs, and we're talking about this dude's belly. Showdown time. <laughs> Welcome to Fiasco Sports Showdowns, my name is Chris Guscott, I'm your host with the most as per usual and I kick fools off as I see fit and give points for good points. As a matter of fact, Matthew Sampson, hope you feel welcome, here's a point. Uh, everyone else, don't get anything, have fun with that. Uh, it's time for the opening bounce. Finals are starting up this weekend and Port Adelaide is going to be a part of them. They finished fifth and booked a home elimination final against Richmond who managed to wheel off nine straight wins to steal a spot in eighth. So I'm going to ask the panel here, starting with Fraser, predict the score for the Port Adelaide Richmond game this weekend. All right, so essentially I've done a little bit of research on this one. Since round 16 in 2007, Richmond currently has a 5-4 win in heads up games against Port Adelaide. I'm going to say that uh, Richmond wins by 19 points, 101 to 82, mainly because Richmond uh, currently has a 48 point overall advantage in points for and points against. Uh, Port Adelaide does have more points for, but they have more points against. So I'm going to say a 101 82 victory to Richmond. Poor power, Richmond in the finals. Who wins? Richmond win. There's a little thing in football called momentum. They're going to make it the perfect 10. 10 wins in a row for Richmond. Why? Because poor power are, at the moment, a bit stop-start. Now, what does that mean? That means that they're not going to win at all. Richmond to win by 36.6 goals. Unfortunately, for poor power at home, uh, sorry, at home for poor power, away to Richmond, they'll go in full steam ahead. The Richmond Tigers are a club defined by the number nine. Ninth spot on the ladder year after year after year. This year, nine wins in a row. Nine wins is where it, low, where it ends by nine points. Port Adelaide Power is going to win away by a goal and a half. They've hit their strides, a hard fought win against Gold Coast, a big thumping over Carlton. They were really good against Fremantle with their pressure in a finals like atmosphere. Nine points to victors, Port Adelaide Power. I see Richmond getting up by three goals. It's a roundabout sort of margin. It'll be a close game, but they'll, they'll kick away at the end. Like Matthew said, momentum is everything in sport. Nine's in a, nine wins in a row. That's just incredible, and it'll keep going. Port Adelaide have showed a bit in the last couple of weeks, but I think they showed they were vulnerable last week against Fremantle. When push came to shove, they went missing. Fremantle piled on the goals. Even with Port Adelaide's oil oh, we'll run over the top, they still couldn't get the job done. Guys like Marich, uh, Rewalt, those sort of guys, Cochin, Martin, they are ready for a big final win after last year with that disappointing loss to Carlton. From one South Australian club to another, Adelaide Crows had a disappointing season finishing 10th and a game outside of the 8 this year. Obviously wasn't the way that they wanted it to go so panellists, Fraser Fife, you start with you. What do you give Adelaide's season in terms of grades? So I'm not going to be as harsh on them as some other people have. I'm going to give them a B minus. I mean, they almost did make the top eight, so they've got that going for them. I never thought they'd go far into the finals if they did make it. Uh, unfortunately, they just don't have the firepower that they need. They were inconsistent when uh, they needed to be consistent. And unfortunately, a lot of teams just managed to improve where, where Adelaide couldn't. So I'd give them a B minus. Hopefully, they can improve next year, but uh, we'll just have to wait till next season to find out. Great Adelaide season, you say. D. Why? Because in, in, in normal exams or any form of um, assessment, a pass is above a D. D is fail. They didn't make the finals. That is a failure. They failed. Adelaide Crows failed in the 2014 season. They finished 10th. They were supposed to finish in the finals. That's what they promised prior to the season. And if you finish 10th, that is hmm, not in the top 50%. Therefore, they failed. D for Adelaide Crows. The Adelaide Crows, an F. F is what I give the Adelaide Crows because they did not make the finals. For year after year we've heard that they were only a kick away from a grand final. They've kept rebuilding their squad. They brought in James Podziadli, they brought in Eddie Betts. Players that they wanted to take them to that next step, yet they finished 10th. Not in the finals, didn't achieve their goals, F. 
reckon I'd have to give him a D. I think not completely an F, but still not a pass mark. They, they didn't achieve what they should have. They went out, they got James Podziadley, Eddie Betts. Guys, to take him to that next level, they've got experience, they just couldn't get it done. The inconsistency was just ridiculous. You look at it, they missed out by a couple of games of making the eight. You look, they lost to Melbourne by not much. I think it was North Melbourne as well. Those, sort of, those sorts of games are what cost you in the end. You've got to win the tight ones, and they weren't good enough. Plus, they need more out of Dangerfield, slow, more consistency. But on a good note, having Taylor Walker back fit and firing will uh, put them in a good spot for next year. All right, elimination time, fellas. I love this part. It's great. All right, throws a five. Eight points. Good start. Really good start. Matthew Diglio, five points. Jeez, struggling a bit. He's a, looks like he's already conceded. Matt Sampson, debut, eight points. Joe Schwab, 11 points. Blew it out of the water, Matthew Diglio. <laughs> Matthew Diglio, yeah, right. And then there were three, it's time for Kara, don't care. The US Open is underway at Flushing Meadows and is in full swing. However, there's not a whole lot of Australians hanging around to enjoy the party. So we're going to start on the panel here. Do you care or don't care about the US Open? Yeah, at this stage, I don't really care. I mean, Kyrgios got knocked out by a Robredo, and that was really the big draw card coming into the US Open, so he's out. We've got some Aussie females who have done well, but I can't really see any of them going too far into the finals. So, you know, and plus I'm not really a tennis fan. It doesn't get too much coverage besides online media. So at this stage, I really don't care. I don't care. I don't particularly care for tennis since Marat Safin retired. For me, tennis is big serves and broken rackets, and I'm not getting any of that out of America at the moment. I care for the fact that there's Australians in there. When they get knocked out, I don't even care anymore. Like, seriously, it's the most boring major out of the four. At least the Australian Open, it's fun because it's here. The French Open's good because it's on clay, it adds something different. The history of Wimbledon, you can't go past that. Plus, Rafa Nadal's not even playing. Like, he's the king of tennis. Like, he's my favourite player. He's not playing. So yeah, until all the Australians are gone, I care, but after that, don't really care at all. From struggling Aussies to more struggling Aussies, and the FIBA World Cup has started, and Australia's already gone down in their first match to Slovenia. An interesting tournament without the stars like Paddy Mills playing, it's hard to see if people are going to get interested in or not. So, care or don't care about the FIBA World Cup? I actually do care about the FIBA World Cup. I mean, for one thing, it's got World Cup attached to it, so it only happens once every four years. You've got guys like Derek Rose who haven't played much professional basketball. This is the chance to see whether he's lost a step. I mean, Paul George going down to injury, that wasn't great, but we also get the chance to see the powerhouse in Team USA. We get to see Australia go up against it, David and Goliath sort of thing. Unfortunately, we haven't got guys like uh, Paddy Mills or Andrew Bogut playing, but it does give us the chance to show that Australia does have depth within the basketball world. So so yeah, I do care. I love the FIBA World Cup, Chris, you know I do, but I'm sacrificing my time and Australia's career game to be here for you, Chris. So I love the FIBA World Cup, not as much as I love you, Chris Guscott. <laughs> the Boomers though, medal contention, hopefully you'll come home to half time, maybe big lead, Aaron Baines, hopefully more, no more cramps, more dunks, more Dante Exum, I love it. I care about it in terms of the Australian Boomers and the USA team, that's it. Couldn't care who wins it, whatever. I just want to go watch the USA team just dominate and just do cool stuff and shoot three-pointers and that sort of stuff. It's good to see Derek Rose back, he'll be interesting to watch. And in terms of the Australians, yeah, you don't get to watch the Boomers play too often, so fingers crossed they have a good tournament. It'd be good to see a young fella like Dante Exum in his first real big tournament now. He's the, like an, he's the top NBA draft pick, so yeah. I care in that sense, but about who wins it and all that stuff, yeah, don't care. And finally, onto what is a bit of a controversial issue, and Michael Sam, who is the first openly gay NFL player, has been cut by the St. Louis Rams. Although he was impressive in his pre-season showings, he didn't quite have enough to make a talented Rams defense. So, do you care or don't care about Michael Sam being delisted from the Rams? Yeah, I do care, but I don't care that he got cut because I believe that he showed that he does belong in the NFL. I think with the St. Louis Rams, they did have a really strong defense, but he did, he did impress in preseason. I think he'll get picked up by another team. Hopefully they can use him uh, more efficiently there. I think the fact that he is gay is just non-factor at this point. The fact that he can focus on a football field, he shows that he belongs. I do care and I hope he does great because uh, it would be a great story for the sport. I, I don't care that Michael Sam got cut from the Rams. I think, if, if anything, it's a money saver. I think they've 
cut his salary by about 75% by signing him to the training roster. I think it's being blown out of proportion because he is the first openly gay player in the NFL and I think that's exactly why we shouldn't care because he is just a football player and the fact that he is gay has nothing to do uh, about whether or not he has been cut. I don't care, it's not a news issue. He's a professional football player in the NFL. Hundreds of them get cut. It's coming up to the first week of the season. Like seriously, like he's probably one of a couple of hundred. He'll probably get uh, picked up by another team. It's just bad luck for him that he got picked up by a team that has a good defense and he's a defensive player. He could go somewhere with a horrible defense and slot straight in. So it's not the last we'll hear of him, but it's, it's not a news issue. It shouldn't be important. Yeah, now the football started, don't worry about the off the field stuff. All right, second elimination time. Only two can advance. Fraser Fife, 21 points. Good effort, good effort. Matt Sampson, 19 points. I oh, see, that's not that bad. Don't act disappointed. Joe Schwab, 24 points. Now you can be disappointed. What do you have to say for yourself, Matt? This is bullshit, Chris. This is bullshit. The boomers are playing right now. I've been waiting for this for four years. I'm an old man since the last time the boomers made the World Cup, and now I've missed half the game. One of the games we're going to win, and I just... I've had it up to here with you, Chris Gusco. All right, you can get out then. Mano a Amano, one-on-one. On one. It's buzzer beat this time. Carmichael Hunt's failed AFL experiment has come to a close, and now he is going back to rugby, but this time he's going to Union. So you've got 12 seconds each, guys. Reaction to Carmichael Hunt's moving to Union. Yeah, obviously AFL didn't work out for him. He's gone back to what works. He's got enough money to do whatever he wants. He's a professional sportsman, you know, good on him. Good on him. He just moved on to greener pastures. He came over to the AFL. He gave it a crack. He succeeded at the highest level. I think people underrate him. He helped expand the game in the Gold Coast. Good on him. Good luck to him in rugby union. And finally, my new favourite guy, Jacksonville State's Caleb Lawrence, defensive tackle. Just likes to let it all hang out. Got a big belly and just wants to show it off. Said it's getting too hot under his Guernsey and he's tired of rearranging it so he just lets it hang out. So, 12 seconds each. How many points do you give this guy for just being comfortable with his stomach? Listen, I give him a solid eight. To find an athlete who actually doesn't care about his physical appearance or embraces it, it's something you don't see in sport very often. So, you know, it's fantastic not seeing someone who's, you know, having a diet of carrots and sticks. 10 out of 10, I mean, I'm, I'm starting to work on one himself, but if this guy wasn't a college athlete, imagine the endorsement deals he would get. Like, seriously, such a good thing. Just who cares? Body image, who cares? All right, gentlemen, you've gotten this far. Congratulations. Carrots and sticks, Fraser? Yes, carrots carrots sticks. not carrot sticks, carrots and sticks. Carrots and sticks. New, new fad diet, check it out. You're ridiculous. Joe wins. Oh. What do you have to say for yourself? What do you have to say for yourself? Carrots and sticks are going to prove you wrong. <laughs> going to prove you so wrong. But, you know, Joe's a good, good contestant, so, you know, well done. That's very civil. Congratulations, guys. And that is all we have time for today. Thank you very much for joining me here on Fiasco Sports Showdown. I'm Chris Guscott. Tune in next week. Next time, catch you around. Yeah, we're going to point at each other. <laughs>